Hi everybody, it's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are getting into topic 6.6, .6, which is on gene expression and cell specialization. And this is really just a rehash of one of the most important points um, that I made in the last video in uh, 6.5, talking about the regulation of gene expression. Um, and here's the point that I want to make. This is actually the same slide or the same page that I had um, in 6.5 or one of them. And it says, regulation of gene expression in eukaryotes like us, you know, organisms often multicellular with cells that have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles, allows for specialization of cells. Results from the process called differential gene expression, which is the expression of different genes, genes with the same genome. Right? So all the trillions and trillions of cells that make up you, um, they all have the same genome if they carry DNA. Some cells don't carry DNA and don't have a nucleus at all but that's a whole nother thing. Um, they all have one very, very, very important job to do. Okay, so if we're taking a look at the, the levels of structural organization of a living thing, cells make up tissues, tissues make up organs, organs make up organ systems, and multiple organ systems working cohesively together makes up an organism, right? Well, at least when we're talking about a multicellular organism like ourselves. So here's the thing about that. Each cell has one job to do. One job. Okay. And that means it's very much specialized, and it's what we call is differentiated. All right, so here's a stem cell, embryonic stem cell. And uh, what you may have heard of these before. Stem cells are just simply cells that are not specialized yet. So you can find them in growing embryos, right? Uh, because they, they need to get a job. They need to be specialized in something. They, they receive a signal from the growing embryo to start developing in one way or another as part of the mesoderm, mesoderm the endoderm, or the ectoderm. Um, and eventually these t kinds of cells will become one of these other types. And there's lots more than just what's in this diagram. Um, but it's going to start getting a signal to start expressing different genes than say, well, red blood cells will express different genes than say a pancreatic cell, okay? Um, it's going to get different signals to get different transcription factors to express different genes so it can do a different job. Okay, That's what this whole picture is about. The phenotype of the cell is determined by the combination of genes that are expressed and the levels at which they are expressed. Okay, So these, th this, what jobs and how they do their job, what jobs they get and how they do their jobs is entirely dependent on which genes they express. Because all of these cells have the same genome. They're all, they all make up you. They all have your DNA, right? But they have different jobs and they express different genes. And that's a really important point I'm trying to make here. Okay, so again, take a look at these two organ systems here. We have the digestive system and its primary purposes, well, one of its primary purposes is to produce enzymes. And those enzymes' job is to break down your food into its tiny components, its monomer components, so that it can be uh, used for energy and those components can be reassembled into molecules that your cells can use. Um, but the nervous system, its primary objective is to send signals from one part of the body to the next to tell each other what to do, sensory input, integration, and motor output. Um, and its job, what it's going to be producing, it's going to be expressing genes that produce neurotransmitters, which are special molecules that can send signals from one neuron to the next. Okay, That's the point I'm trying to make here, um, is that it's highly dependent on gene regulation. What, How these cells are specialized is, um, is dependent on gene regulation and which genes are expressed. So gene expression depends on RNA polymerase and transcription factors binding to the promoter sequence. Okay, The transcription factors that each cell is going to have are dependent on you know which genes they're going to express. Negative regulatory molecules can inhibit gene expression, bind to DNA, and block transcription. This is another topic that we discussed in our last video as well. Like say micro mRNAs, uh, or excuse me, micro RNAs, or various other regulatory molecules that can stop transcription, stop uh, translation, even. And then finally, micro RNAs also regulate gene expression after transcription. Right, and here's a Here's an image of microRNA, you know, taking out a little piece and, uh, well, yeah, doing its job. Okay, um, and here's this picture is really, really simple of, you know, the transcription factors working together to uh, bind to the promoter on a DNA sequence and start producing a transcript. Okay, so again, 
RNA polymerase, the action of RNA polymerase transcription factors um, is going to determine where it binds to uh, or what promoters it binds to and what genes it's going to express. And that determines the function or the speciality of the cell. Okay, uh, that'll be it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions. See you next one.